Hey everybody, I thought I would give you a quick tour of my rack setup while I'm doing a quick uh, 10 minute maintenance here. Um, sorry for the uh, dark lighting, it's in my garage and uh, not really a whole lot of easy ways for me to get light in here, um, but I do have my handy little flashlight with me. Um, so hopefully that's enough and it doesn't wash out everything too much. But anyway, um, so my, my system, or I guess my entire rack consists of three different units two 3U's and a 4U. Uh, the top one here is a Supermicro 836TQ, which is 3U. I've got an 836TQ on the bottom, and then an 847 45 drive bay dash in the middle. And I have uh, white post-it notes with the uh, last bit of the serial and like, you know, so here's the serial and the drive size. Got four terabytes on the top, three rows of them, so 12 four terabytes, and then 12 eight terabytes on the bottom. The, uh, the top guy here is my 3U836. That's for the uh, free NAS box. All the free NAS hardware is in there. There's a, no actual, well, actually, I guess I do have drives in here now. Uh, these four on here, and these four here, so there's eight. Three terabyte Hitachi's. I didn't serial serialize them yet. Uh, those are in RAID 10 uh, for VM storage. FreeNAS 11 just upgraded to that. And then uh, I've got 12 four terabytes in uh, in Z2, and 12 eight terabytes in Z2, and that's connected through 8088 SAS. So this guy connects down to the DAS down here. And I'll show you in the back where, how it connects and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so storage controller, more storage, just pure storage down here in the 4U. And then down here is the actual server itself. This is again another 3U with uh, 16 bays in the front. I've got two two terabytes, uh, I guess they're in RAID 0, just for uh, general storage. Nothing important that goes on there. 240 gig SSD boot, 1 terabyte M.2 uh, SSD. It's just a SATA drive, uh, but it is M.2, so I have a converter. It goes into a little bay uh, thing like here. Flips. It's flipped upside down, so you can't really see it. But these Super Micro Drive caddies are pretty awesome. They're really easy to use. Just blank ones. So yeah, ten U of stuff in the front. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually upgrade the RAM, the free NAS box. So I'm going to pull this guy out. And I shouldn't have to pull him out too much. So I've got these two silver. Uh, like push pin things here. Push these down, slide it back. It's really hard to do with just one hand. So I've already changed the fans here from the Super Micro fans to Arctic 80mm PWM PST fans. Um, they're okay. They're a lot quieter than the Super Microns for sure, uh, but I don't know if I'm going to keep them, to be honest. Uh, it does run a little bit warmer. When I move this thing to the bigger garage, I'll have a little bit more airflow. Um, hopefully they'll be okay for that, and uh, I won't have to change them. But they're doing okay now. Nothing's overheating. It's just running a little bit warmer than normal. Um, so let's see if I can get some ambient light here. So got three fans here in the fan wall, the uh, power supply and the, uh, I guess it's like the distributor, the breakout box, the power supply is over here, and the power supply goes all the way to the back. Uh, two more fans in the back and then a uh, fan shroud that goes over top of the CPU heatsink. And there are eight, eight dims, four on each side, four channels, and then in this motherboard I have a... I think it's an 8400GS. Um, it doesn't have VGA on board. 
So I had to add a video card, and I've got 10 gig E. I've got a LSI 9201-16E for external SAS, and I've got a 9210-8I for internal SAS. I'm only using uh, eight SATA ports, so I only have one of those guys. And uh, I will add another or a SAS expander if I need to use the other eight ports, but I really doubt it. I'm not using any ports in the back of the DAS, so I have 21 free bays right now on top of the uh, the bays that are in the front of this guy. So I don't think I'll be needing to do that anytime soon. Um, but yeah, so we just gotta take out these two fans in the back. Uh, they're pretty easy. So unfortunately with the uh, Arctic fans, I can't use the quick disconnect PWM uh, wires. So I kind of have to have them plugged in first. Usually I just hang them off the back here like this. And then you can just kind of pull up on this, this guy. So I'm upgrading from 8, 8 gig sticks DDR3 ECC 1333 to 8, 16 gig sticks of DDR3 13, or no, I'm sorry, 1066. ECC. So slight down, downgrade on speed, but double the capacity, and I'm okay with that. I think eventually I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to switch my free nest server over to the uh, one that's below it, the uh, dual CPU system, so I'll move the RAM over as well, and I guess I'll have uh, 256 gig in there, and then I'll have just 64 in the primary server. I really don't need that much in my primary, so I I think I would be, uh, it would be a little bit more of a benefit to use more RAM in the FreeNAS, especially with uh, I just upgraded the FreeNAS 11 so I can use VMs and stuff like that. So hopefully I can offload some of my VMs to that. And have kind of everything running on the uh, FreeNAS box. And then I'll just have the server for Plex and some other CPU intensive stuff. One downside of having your server in your garage. You get like freaking crickets and flies and shit in here. This guy is like dead. Super dead. Yeah. It's gross. Even with all the uh, tiny little holes and stuff, I can still manage to get gigantic crickets in here. Oh, didn't clip this guy down yet. And this is just Samsung. Uh, ECC registered, nothing special. Got a hell of a deal on it though. It was only 210, I think, for eight 16 gig sticks. Which is really the only reason I'm upgrading in the first place. So I guess the uh, long term plan is to move this, uh, move this RAM to the other server, which has 24 DIMMs. So I would have, uh, you know, these eight plus Want to be 16 8 gig sticks for a total of 256 gig, and then I just put the 8 gig sticks back in here. Maybe upgrade this to like a single um, E5 2650 V2 or 2660 V2 or 2680 V2, or hell, even a 2696 V2 if I have the spare cash, which would be a 12 core. I think around 19 or 20,000 pass mark just for one processor. That'd be sweet. Alrighty. And shield just goes back on. Not that way. I walk in the front. Honestly. This thing doesn't fit the best. It is made for this, but the tabs kind of broke off at the front before I even got the, the server. It's kind of sent to me that way.
right. Come on, you bugger. Okie dokie. So these guys are Micron eight gig sticks. Awesome RAM. Ooh, Micron. Wait, that one's Micron. This one's Kingston. Huh. Wonder where I got that Micron stick from. These are Kingston too. Kingston, 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 Micron. So we got two Micron, six Kingston. Alright. I guess these will sit here for now. Attempt to put this cover back on. Excuse the loud noise, sorry about that. Alright, and uh, I'll cut for a second and I'll take you to the back and just give you a quick tour of the back. And I guess that'll be it for this video. Uh, I guess before I head to the actual back of the server, this is one of the things I've been working on. Um, this is just a 1U Super Micro. Uh, I put the X8 SIL combo in it. I bought a 1U heatsink for 1156. Uh, it's got six 140, or 640 millimeter fans in the front. 8 gig of DDR3 ECC. And then you have to use this kind of, I don't know if you can see, a, uh, a riser to get a full like PCI Express slot. Um, but I actually don't have the correct riser in here. I realize this after the fact. So even though it's a six, you know, the riser fits and everything, um, it sits too low to use the slot. So I'm gonna take this guy out. I just got the new riser. It's a, this one happens to be an X8, and I actually have to put it in the second slot. So, what I think I'll do is I'll put. I don't know if I'll put Unraid on this. I don't know. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this guy yet. Uh, but I'll probably put 10 giggy in this and then connect it to the FreeNAS directly. And uh, we'll see what we can do from there. Um, has space for one hard drive or one S SSD. I guess you could cram probably two or three SSDs in here, kind of sideways, and you would mount the hard drive here. But uh, yeah, this guy's pretty simple. It's pretty awesome. I don't really recommend one use because they are louder, um, but this originally had an X8 DTL dual 1366 board in it. Um, buying the one U case with the power supply and the board was the exact same price as just buying the board. So I figured why the hell not. Um, so I bought two of these. I already sold both boards. And I was like, eh, I just have an extra chassis. So I threw the X8 SIL in here. Um, so yeah, this will just be a little fun play system. And maybe I'll do a couple of videos on this guy in the future. So anyway. Back to the messy rack. Um, I'm really sorry about the bad lighting. It's it's really unfortunate. In the new place, I'm going to have some sort of better setup in here, at least so we can do stuff with the rack and have some more fun. Um, new Unify Switch 8, uh, Ubiquiti USG, um, Philips Hue Bridge, which I only use for regular Hue bulbs, not the RGB ones and pretty much an unused TP-Link. I think it's a 24 port. 16, uh, let's, see. let's see if I can count. Yep, 24 port switch. Um, it's a, it makes a really good shelf. It makes a really good shelf. There's a couple things plugged into it, like my IPMI, but nothing special. On to the back of the servers. Here's the back of the FreeNAS box. Um, not a whole lot to see. I only have one power supply plugged in over there. And FreeNAS stick. And then on the back here, if you can see this, hopefully the lighting's not terrible. Anyway, there's the VGA. 
there's the four port SAS 8088 and then right next to it is the 10 gig E and then moving down we have a bunch of blank spaces in the DAS 21 bays uh, I've got both of the uh, 1400 watt power supplies plugged in and down below it I've got the huge mess of wires plus uh, the actual server itself with quad NIC and IPMI and then uh, again 10 giggy direct connect to the free NAS and then uh, I guess we're just gonna boot her up and for me the boot process is turn on the DAS first which is the loudest one I haven't replaced the fans in the DAS yet so bear with me here uh, DAS turns on first and then FreeNAS turns on after, and then the server turns on. So I got the power button here. Turn this guy on. You probably won't even be able to hear the FreeNAS turn on. Just a little beep. And I haven't tested any of this RAM, so hopefully this guy boots. Normally my monitor's on the, uh, sitting on the switch, but I just put all that new uh, Ubiquiti stuff in, so it's sitting on the floor. fans on the uh, DAS, they run full speed just to start, and then usually after two minutes they start to, to tone themselves down a bit, but they're, they're still pretty loud. We're all good. Um, so again, appreciate you checking out this video. Um, I will definitely get a better rack tour, better lighting setup. Um, but I just did a quick maintenance, wanted to switch out the RAM, and uh, thought I would give you guys a quick tour since I haven't actually done anything yet. Oh, and uh, last thing which I didn't show you, uh, Ubiquity Cloud Key, which is plugged into the switch. Um, just lets me manage my network a little bit better. I don't have to run the, the Ubiquity uh, Unify application. It's all just running on the cloud key. And then I can access that from anywhere. Um, but yeah. Oh, there go the fans. They turned down a little bit. But well, they'll keep stepping down uh, as it decides that it's not running really hot. Um, hopefully next time I'll have those fans replaced too. They're really, really big pain in the ass compared to the other ones. Um, but yeah, I'll figure out something with them. And then I uh, I guess I'll do another, another one of these in like a couple months when I move into the new place and uh, let you know what's changed since then. I'll see you then.